Hello, this is Mom Helen, and in this discussion, we will talk about limit loss and its application. So let's begin without further ado. First is the limit of a constant or the constant rule. It says that if you are identifying the limit of a constant, then the limit of that constant is the constant itself. So for example, we have the limit of 4 as x approaches 2, then the limit in itself is already 4 because this is a constant. Whatever you get or whatever value of the constant there is, kahit ano pang ina-approach ni 6, basta constant yan, what you use is the constant itself. Next, the limit of the identity or identity rule. When you are getting... The limit of x as x approaches a, whatever x approaches to, that will already be your limit. For example, you're solving the limit of x as x approaches 2. Therefore, the limit is already 2. For example, you're solving for the limit of x as x approaches 5, then the limit is already 5. Limit of x as x approaches negative 8, then the limit is already negative 8. Identity rule. Kung ano man ang ina-approach ni x, kung x lang ang hinahanapan mo ng limit, yun na kaagad ang sagot. Susunod, limit of a constant times a function. This is also known as the coefficient rule. It states that if you're, you're identifying the limit of a constant times a function as x approaches a, the limit is the constant times, uh, sorry, coefficient times the limit of the function f. So this is how we do it. Say we are looking for the limit of 4x as x approaches 2. First, we have to separate and identify and separate the coefficient, which in this case is 4. Therefore, we have 4 times the limit of x as x approaches 2. And from here, we could now use identity rule kasi limit of x as x approaches 2 na lang siya. You're looking for the value of x alone. Therefore, we will have 4 times 2 and the limit of the whole function is 8. Tada! That's it. Let's have another illustration for that. What if we have the limit of negative 2? So again, we separate the coefficient first and then get the limit of the function. And here, we will get negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10. Next, the limit of the sum of functions or the sum rule. The sum rule is also related to the rest of the um, operations rule, but let's illustrate that further. It just states that if you're getting the limit of a function of added functions, you have to identify the limit per term and add them all together. So let's say we are getting the limit of the function x plus 7 as x approaches 2. We have to get the limit per term and then add them all together in the end. That will look like this. The limit of x as x approaches 2 plus the limit of 7 as x approaches 2. Now, if you look closely, limit of x as x approaches 2 is already the identity rule. And limit of 7 plus uh, limit of 7 as x approaches 2 is already the constant rule. So this is now how we will be able to simplify the limit of x as x approaches 2 by the identity rule is just 2. Plus, the limit of 7 as x approaches 2 according to your constant rule is just 7. Therefore, the limit of the whole function will just be 9. That's it. Next would be the difference rule. So there we have it. Uh, for the difference rule, same goes. Kaso, instead na addition, subtraction naman siya. Still get the limit first of every term and then you subtract. Okay? And then for the product of functions, you just get the limit of every um, factor and then you multiply them to each other. For this one, for example, you have x times 7x, product rule tayo. Get the limit of x first and then get the limit of 7x. So I will go through these because you will appreciate them better when we use the 
examples. Okay? So, we, when we get to the examples. Power rule. You have to first get the limit of the function inside before we raise it to the certain power. Ayan. So, let's try that. Uh, I think I have to illustrate this one for you. Oh, it's already here. The first step is here. We have to first um, get the limit of the function inside. And then once we see it, you would be able to identify na ah, kailangan pala dito ng sum rule. Therefore, this would now appear to look like this. Limit of 3x as x approaches 1 plus the limit of 4 as x approaches 1. This is by sum rule. And then if you will look at this term, this is now a coefficient rule. Therefore, we have to apply that rule again. You'll get the limit of x as x approaches 1 plus the limit of 4 as x approaches 1. So what we used here is the coefficient, coefficient rule. And then lastly, we now boil down to the identity rule and the constant rule. If you would notice, parang ang goal natin lagi ay umabot dun sa last two most basic rules na yun. So we'll have 3 times 1 plus 4. This is uh, according to your identity rule and constant rule. You'll get 7 as the limit of your function. Oh yeah, thank you for uh, reminding me. This is cubed. 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 Therefore, we have to erase this one and cube that. You could use your calculator or you could uh, use your brain. <laughs> 7 times 7 times 7 or 7 cubed. You'll get... Mm -hmm. so, oh, sorry. For that, yeah, 343. 343. Let's move on. Let's move on. Huh? Nth rule, uh, nth root or root rule, this is the same as the power rule. Pasok mo muna yung limit notation. Tapos get the um, what do you call that? Get the limit per term. And you have to be able to boil down to the identity rule and constant rule. So let's have some examples. Let's solve and identify the applicable limit laws here. So we are looking for the limit of the function 2x over 8x minus 5 as x approaches 3. So the most visible or the biggest, if I may say, if uh, you would allow me to use that term, the biggest operation here is division because we have a complex fraction. Therefore, we start with that, with uh, distributing the limit notation in the numerator and denominator, limit of 2x as x approaches 3, all over the limit of the function 8x minus 5 as x approaches 3. Again, what we used here is the quotient rule. After that, we could simplify further. So this one will require us to use the coefficient rule. So 2 times the limit of x as x approaches 3. And then here, we have a combination of the difference rule and the um, coefficient rule. So let's put that together now. 8 times the limit of x as x approaches 3 minus the limit of 5 as x approaches 3. So what's happening? Your goal again is to get to the identity rule and to the constant rule. So what we did, what we used here is the coefficient rule, coefficient rule and the subtraction or sorry, difference rule. Difference rule. Now, let me just fix my notations. These should be in parentheses. Uh-huh. There we go. Now, because we have reached the identity rule and the constant rule, we, now, we could now uh, apply them and have 2 times 3 all over 8 
times 3 minus 5. Again, what we used, our identity rule and constant rule. We have 6 over 24 minus 5, which is 6 over 19. So the limit of this is 6 over 19. Ta-da! Mom, should we put it in decimal? Well, I prefer you to answer in fractions, right? So that's it for the application of the limit loss. In our next discussion, we will have a word problem related to limit loss. See you.